Welcome to the C.S. Joseph podcast. I'm your host, C.S. Joseph, and we are still catching up on additional acolyte questions because new month, new set of questions. This is kind of how we roll. And uh, I do love all of the uh, sirens in the background because we're in the middle of a snowstorm right now, and that's apparently when everyone loses all intelligence uh, whatsoever on the road. Uh, I'm very thankful that uh, I'm okay in the process and many inches have come down and not entirely sure how I'm going to get home, but I think I'll figure it out. So, but anyway, uh, today's question is, how do I get an ISTJ to feel more positive about me? And this question is coming from an ENTJ woman. Uh, I, I find this a uh, very fascinating question because like my first, my first question is, is like, okay, well, what are you trying to do with the ISTJ? Is this like a sexual thing? Is this an emotional thing? Like what's the angle here, right? So please, when you're providing questions to me, please state your angle because knowing the angle would be very helpful in these particular situations. So, uh, but uh, I could see that there is a bronze pair or also known as intrigue level of uh, sexual compatibility between these two types. So it could definitely be a sexually related question, not entirely sure, but I think I'm going to answer this question in a general way. Uh, and then uh, we'll just kind of see what happens. So how, how do you make an ISTJ feel positive about anything? Well. First of all, uh, you need to go out of your way to make sure that they can uh, save face. I mean, shouldn't you be watching Eight Rules for Love ISTJ episode? That might actually be helpful and may communicate exactly uh, what needs to be communicated uh, for that. But, but yeah, I mean, they're all about saving face. They're all about looking good. They're all about having status. Like every ISTJ in the world wants to feel classy or they wanna feel rugged with their ESTP shadow, but for their ego, they wanna feel classy. And then their ENFP subconscious, it's like an even higher level of class. It's not just being classy in general, it's like, hey, I'm a VIP level of class, right? So you always gotta be aware of how an ISTJ sees things uh, from these three different points of view. And I'm not gonna bother talk about the super ego because it's so mute. Uh, or moot, uh, is depending on uh, which word you want to use here. But uh, the reality of the situation is, is that, again, it's really just a balance between, an act of balance between being classy or being a VIP or being rugged and tough, basically. So, uh, and, you know, there's ISTJs come in different flavors. Is this the Vin Diesel, Channing Tatum variety? Or is this the super uh, mega nerdy Dean Pelton from community variety of ISTJ? There's a lot of different uh, varieties of ISTJ and people just don't really understand that. And that has something to do with cognitive focus, right? Cognitive focus is what determines the difference. And we've been talking about focus a lot. Uh, if you wanna learn more about focus, please sign up for uh, a membership at csjoseph.life forward slash members and watch the season 18 content. We talk a lot about cognitive focus and we're about to be releasing, um, I mean, Chris is working on preliminary stuff right now with season 33 and he's done a great job so far, uh, but we are going to be uh, going into our own version of the Enneagram in the very near future. Uh, and uh, we're going to be talking more about how to use our version of the Enneagram to actually help determine cognitive focus. And hopefully it's going to be an additional tool that's going to be added to Ucha as well. So more on that later. Uh, so obviously, you know, since they're a TE user, they need to basically look good. They need to have a great personal brand. People need to be thinking highly of them. And one way that you as an ENTJ can do this is you're a TE user as well. Don't put your status above the status of the ISTJ. Just don't do that. I understand the status is important to you. But, uh, I mean, if you're the one who's doing the initiating, if you're the one seeking them out, if you're the one that actually wants them, especially from a sexual point of view, maybe even an emotional point of view, but regardless, uh, it's technically, you're gonna have to let go of your TE in favor of their extroverted thinking. That's just kind of how it has to be. Uh, 
Otherwise, you know, what's the point of them interacting with you? What's the point of them sticking around for you? You know what I'm saying? So, like, just be aware of that. Like, you got to make sure not to offend their TE. You don't want to offend their, not their sensibility, but their sense of status, their sense of respect. And you need to lead with respect. And don't expect them to be respectful towards you because technically you're the one seeking them out. So, which means you have to be the one to lead with respect for them. You have to take that more submissive role, regardless of what your gender is. This is just kind of how ISTJs are. It's annoying, but it's just how they are. And I, I gotta hand it to them. Like it's what they're looking for out of life. So maybe since you're wanting them to feel more positive about you, that you actually give them what they're looking for. The other thing is too, is that like, always include them on things like set up adventures like hey i want to go do this thing you should come with me that's a perfectly good opening line if you're going to be asking out an istj you're like hey i want to go do this thing you should come with me and then you're telling and then you're basically telling them you're obligating them to go with you and that's important but it makes them feel wanted and make statements about how desirable they are make statements about how strong they are. That's a good one because SI Hero is all about personal strength and they always want to hear how strong they are, which makes them feel desired. The more you comment about how their, their strength, even their strength of character and their power, basically, because power and strength is like talking to SI and TE at the same time, it really makes them feel super positive about you to the point where they may even actually have an increase in attraction towards you as a result. And wouldn't that be nice? Wouldn't that be a thing? You see what I'm saying? So like, no offense guys, it's like it's super easy to get into an ISTJ's pants, male or female, it's super mega easy. You just comment about how strong they are and you comment about their status and how classy they are or how they might actually end up turning into a VIP one day while also still able to be rugged and get down and dirty and actually fix things and willing to do all of that and talk about their strength of character. I mean, it's literally just flattery if you think about it. And regardless of what anyone says, it's so funny. Like I always hear like STPs especially, or even NFPs all talking about how immune to flattery they are. Nobody is immune to flattery. It just, people have different buttons to press and it's all social engineering. If you do wanna learn more about social engineering, please check out uh, the season 21 playlist here on this channel and learn about social engineering. And remember that all social engineering, all human communication, all human interaction is a form of manipulation, regardless of the negative connotations attached to the word manipulation, okay? Like you guys need to like let go of your colloquial definitions of words because like, it, you you could be kind of a little bit ignorant using words. I mean, like, especially like if you're watching The Princess Bride and then you have Inigo Montoya saying like, I do not think that word means what you think it means. Like, it's the same, it's the same thing, guys. Like, just understand that. So, but yeah, like literally you're just, you're just feeding the inferior function, expert intuition inferior. They're afraid of being unwanted. They're afraid of being desired. And then using cognitive access, talk at comment about how strong they are so that they feel desirable around you or around anyone in general. And then also you yourself provide concrete actions to prove that you actually want them and you want to be around them. Include them in things, factor them in to certain things. Make sure that their sensibilities and their comforts are not being offended at the same time. Tell them that you think highly of them to hit their TE, very simple. And, uh, and then provide specific examples as to why you think highly of them. Because you know when it comes to flattery, people will be like, well, I didn't deserve that flattery. I didn't earn that flattery. And the INFJ superego demon of the ISTJ will absolutely have its radar up. Like, okay, why am I being flattered here? Uh, what's this person's game? But if you seem genuine enough, well, then it won't matter, okay? So there you have it. That's how you get an ISTJ to feel more positive about you or basically literally anybody else. Uh, and also like they're systematic. So, and they'll talk about their systems. Adopt their systems uh, when you can. Try out their systems. And uh, also if they give them an opportunity to like be heard and share their value system with you, if you're just gonna dismiss their feelings, then they're gonna hate you. So you might wanna like not do that. So. Anyway, folks, uh, thanks for watching uh, this episode, and I'll see you guys tonight. You
Silver Soul